All right, we are moving on with section 11. You'll find that rational square roots are actually pretty nice and easy. So when we see a term like a square root sign, there's actually something missing from that notation. It is understood that if it, you don't see a number inside the radical, that it is a square root. Oftentimes you will see a two in there. And what we do is the square root of 36. Well, we can write it with the two in there just for this demonstration and showing how this works. But I can rewrite 36 as six times six. I think you'd all agree with that. And then I could write 6 times 6 as 6 squared. And so what happens here is I have the square root of 6 squared. The square root and the square will actually cancel each other. And you will be left with the base, which is just 6. Much like addition cancels out subtraction, subtraction cancels out addition, Multiplication cancels division, division cancels multiplication. Squares cancel out square roots, and square roots cancel out squares. So this is a real nice um, understanding of square roots. When we get them in fractions, or yeah, when they're in fractions, something like, not 4 sixteenths, 4 twenty-fifths, we can separate square roots into separate radicals when they're being multiplied. When we have, we can separate those into separate radicals. The only thing we can't separate is subtraction and addition. So if we have, we cannot separate this to this. That is not applicable. So let's look at a couple of these and the easiest way outside of memorizing your perfect squares is plugging them in. So we're going to do 36. You're going to hit the square root button. You get 6. Square root. The negative is outside so the opposite of 400 square root is 20. Plus or minus square root of 2500 gives you 50. So it's going to be plus or minus 50. Here we're going to get plus or minus. I'm going to separate these and I'm going to get plus or minus 11 over 5. Square root of 121 is 11. This is going to be minus square root of 484 which I'm pretty sure is 22 over the square root of 100 which equals 10 and we would simplify that to 11 fifths. Now, let's take a look at that one. If we, let's make sure 484 is 22, good. So let's look at that. Let's say we take 484 and divide it by 100, we get 4.84. And then we hit the square button, we get 2.2, .2, which is 11 over five. So we could simplify this, but I noticed that both were perfect squares, and so I kept it in that native form. In this one, square root of 28 is not a perfect square, nor is 63. So I'm going to divide that by 7, and we get that. Now, that doesn't look fun, does it? So I'd much rather simplify it by 7. 7 goes in 4 times. 7 goes into 63 9 times. And now, I see that both are perfect squares, and I get negative, whoop, that is four-thirds, huh, that's, oh, I didn't take the square root of that, yeah, 0.6 repeating, which is two-thirds. Now, when we have decimals, 0 0.04, we take the square root, we get 0 
and it says uh, express as a decimal. Decimal, that's fine. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get 1.1. No, 0.1 maybe. I don't know, 1.21 square root, 1.1. And that is a crazy one, 0 0.0196 square root, 0 0.14. Those I don't expect you to memorize. The next section, we're going to plug these values into this equation. So x is 5 squared minus 3 squared minus the square root of x, which is 5, quantity squared. Well, 5 squared is 25 minus 9 gives me 16 minus, and here's a great example. Here's where a square, square, square root and a square will cancel each other. When you square a square root, that would be, that's rad 5 times rad 5. Any radical times itself is going to cancel each other, but we could see that as a square root of 25, which equals 5. But I'd much rather you just see that a square root and a square will cancel each other, and the 5 will pop out. So we have 4, so my answer is negative 1. That's a really good question right there.